soldiers, I'm Daisy, founder of Banish. We hope that this movement has helped you feel confident about your skin with or without acne. Want a chance to change the world and be featured in our Banish Acne Diaries? Click on the link below to be featured in BAD. Enjoy the rest of this video. So I am, well, I will be 28 uh, in 20 days. <laughs> My birthday is at the end of this month. I live now in Boston currently. I'm originally from California, born and raised there in Lake Elsinore. So right now I work part-time at Barnes & Noble. I'm a bookseller there. During my free time, I like to do some like freelance modeling, work with photographers, and you know, I like to meet more with you know fashion designers as well. Yeah, that's one of my favorite things to do now. Wow. Yeah, I like to meet as much you know creative individuals like myself. I've done some like student films as well, like with Boston University. I've done student films, and I've also done like background work from like the films that have been you know made here. My first one was Black Mass. Yeah. Oh wow, that's amazing. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was really cool. <laughs> and other than creatively and artistically, I love their style of, you know, filmmaking, acting. I just feel like with Tim Burton, his movies, you know, he focuses a lot of his main characters. They're like the anti-heroes. They're like the outsiders. They're the weirdos, you know? <laughs> Weird, but I mean, it makes a lot of sense to me that with his movie, Edward Scissorhands, I just always connected to that movie so much. Even when I was little, little, when I was like, I don't know, maybe six or eight years old. Just, you have this character who has, you know, scissors for hands, you know, that's really out there and crazy. You know, he comes into this, you know, new town and everyone is just, who is this guy? Just a lot of his characters are really different. And they're based, like, loosely based, like, on Tim Burton's childhood, too. Like, he felt like that. Just didn't really feel he was a part of the outside world, where everything he thought was normal was not really normal to him. about four years old I was diagnosed with it's called cyclic vomiting syndrome it's a chronic condition where I have uh, severe bouts of vomiting and migraines and abdominal pain it was a lot worse when I was a kid as I've gotten older it has gotten better as long as you know I keep my stress level at a low and at a minimum and usually when I tell people that I have that, they're like, what, what is that? I never heard of that. <laughs> I like to bring some type of awareness because it is, you know, it's a very traumatizing thing to go through. I would love for everyone to know about this because you know, not everyone does. There was actually an episode on Grey's Anatomy of a character that had cyclic vomiting syndrome is because one of the actresses has a daughter with the same thing. That's how it was written to the show. But I don't know, I just feel like it wasn't best represented. Like to me, it didn't really like again it felt connected. Like it was about like this character is an older gentleman. He kept vomiting on one of the doctors like constantly and the other doctor was like, What are you doing? Like you still with the vo vomit on your <laughs> I don't know. I just feel like they kind of played it off as like a comedy type of thing, like a silly like act. Didn't really play it off as so serious, in which you know it is. It's like four years old, and my mom was like, you know, what's going on? The doctors, they've done so many tests, and like, oh, she just has the flu. Like, you know, calm down, blah blah blah. I feel like you know, you're like the only one, basically. Like, I felt alone for a very long time because. You know, this thing that I have is just so rare that there was no, like, real support group or, like, a community or whatever. It wasn't until, like, several years ago where I talked to this woman from Australia. You know, we were talking about it and it was just like, oh, finally, you know. <laughs> She's, like, around my age, too, with her struggles and going to emergency rooms constantly. And, and there's no real cause. It comes out of nowhere. Growing up, I like to be outdoors and, you know, I play softball for 
10 years and I also love drawing, painting. I'm very much into the arts and movies, music. Those are the things that I enjoy the most. My biggest inspiration is Tim Burton. I love him. And uh, also Johnny Depp. Uh, (laughs) They're my heroes. So when I was 14, my family, we moved to Indiana. It was about like two years after that when I started softball again in high school. I was 16 years old and that's when I first started breaking out. And it was like all over my forehead and my cheeks and just, yeah, everywhere. It was, yeah, the severe lysistic acne, like the really painful, you know, under the surface, like acne. <laughs> yeah, I think it's all genetics too. My, my older sister has the issue and my mom, she has skin issues as well. Pretty stressful and yeah, really ultimately really embarrassing. Like I just didn't really want to like go out as much as I would like to. Even like, you know, when I was in the softball team, if I wanted to hang out with the girls I was on the team with, I felt uncomfortable and I didn't feel like myself, ultimately. I was just in the shell for so long and it just, it really brought me down. Yeah, I feel like it's a little bit of both. I mean, I still feel like I want to go out and this is me, this is who I am. I have scars, you know, just shows that, you know, I've overcome so much as a person before I was just like oh I would have to put on tons and tons of makeup for people to like really look at me and not look at my skin but now I'm just like I really don't care like you know you're talking to me that's why I want people to really get to know me instead of just place judgment you know based on my appearance and if they can't accept that then that's their issues It was not until when I like had my first job, people were starting to see problems and a lot of people tried to like, I mean, I understand they were trying to be helpful, telling me like, oh, you should try this, you should try that, you know, and I'm just like, yeah, I I have been trying, (laughs) you know, I don't know, it's a very weird thing. Oh, you should try, you know, this mask or this stuff and that, and it's just like, okay, like, can we stop talking about my skin now? (laughs) You know, (laughs) because I don't want to pay attention to it. (laughs) I really believe that. I feel more connected to that person that knows exactly what I'm going through, you know, that has such a big problem with it. It's It's very different. It's hard for me to relate to them on a personal level, I feel like. I think just staying creative, I think drawing and painting, that has been my go-to. Like, that has been my solace since I was a kid. I'm not good at communicating, like, verbally, you know? Like, I just don't have, like, the best, like, vocabulary or whatever. But I feel like with art, I feel like I communicate better with that. Whether it's a drawing or painting or even, like, with writing or, or acting, whatever. I feel like I can express myself better. <laughs> And if I can, you know, like when I was at my old job doing watercolors and paintings, or whatever, and people would like them and want a copy of my work, I'm like, that's really cool. It's, it's really exciting that, you know, people enjoy the things that, you know, I enjoy. I think I saw was it her name, Daisy, watching her like tutorial videos like through YouTube and just saw like how easy it was like just watching the tutorials and seeing the reviews from other people and also like through instagram you know how much they love the products and i was just like made me really want to think okay what have i got to lose you know i'll give it a shot (laughs) i really love the the pumpkin masks yeah that's one of my favorites before i had the the Derma Roller, but now I have, you know, the new Banish 2.0, and I do like that one a lot better, just because not only easy to use again, but I can travel with it too, you know, like the packaging-wise and all that. I like that you can use, like, less of the alcohol, you know, to clean the product in too, you know, putting on the vitamin C oil and you know, I felt my skin a lot, lot smoother. You know, before it was just so rough and dry. I felt my skin, you know, a lot smoother and also had that glow back. Because when I use like other products in the past, it's just so drying and cracked and, 
you know, it's just like, that's not healthy. <laughs> like the banish, like through my story or post or whatever, I've gotten like, you know, really amazing, you know, feedback from them, you know, very encouraging words. And, you know, they were so happy with my results. You know, I am. So that was really cool. So I really like that a lot. I've shared several of my like before and after pictures and I've also showed like really bad, you know, my skin at my worst. And that was like from years ago. Feedback like, oh my God, like, you know, your skin looks amazing now. So. <laughs> I would say perfection is overrated. I think that it's really not that big of a deal. I made it such a big deal, but I would have to say to my younger self, like, it's not a big deal. It's not the end of the world. You can get through this. There are bigger things out there, you know, to worry about, you know, other than your skin. And it's a part of you and very humbling experience, I would say, too. You gotta stay calm, <laughs> you know, and just you gotta get through the day. Don't let that bring you down. Keep going on and keep living your life. Can't just stop the day because you have acne. Hey soldiers, it's Daisy, founder of Banish. Did you like this video? Please give it a thumbs up and comment and subscribe to our channel to be featured with any future Banish acne diaries and skin positivity. Thank you and don't forget, Banish, we got your back. Bye.